Hello, it's Sarah. And today I'm going to do a tutorial for this little piece. This is um, one of Renee Mullen's PlumPurdy.com. It's one of her free patterns, and I painted it up already. Um, and I love him. I think he's, it's a great beginner project where I'm going to refer you to the first tutorial to get any real nitty gritty directions, but this one I'll just take you through more quickly. I also painted the other pattern of hers, um, Winter Wonderland, I think it's called. I forget. Um, where the heck is it? Anywho, yeah, Winter Wonderland. But it's so long. I did a tutorial for it, but it's so long, this one. This is another free pattern of hers. Um, so I'm going to redo it. I went to Michael's and I got this plaque. This is the same plaque. This is one of the Art Minds Pine plaque. And it is, I believe it's 8 inches. <clears throat> and it was around 5 bucks. Let's see. Yeah, it's like around 8, 8, 8 and a half, but it's perfect for this project. It was like around five and change, five dollars and change, and I used the coupon. So if you want to paint right along with me, I'll do this one next. I'm going to do the redo the tutorial um, because it's just too long. I don't need to have all the. I was I anyway. You know what I like though? I did put a star, like a three dimensional button on there. I added some stickles, so I'm kind of adding things that I never have added before when I painted like on him this is my Santa this is just a wood piece that I had in my stash forever I had I used to teach classes so I had a lot of wood I had to reduce the pattern um, down to 75 percent so I just took it my printer I have the um, PhotoSmart HP PhotoSmart printer so I reduced this down to 75 percent and it fit perfectly so I traced it onto here, but look, ha look how I did, um, I did glossy accents on his glasses, and I put Winka Stella on this, um, gingerbread, and I put stickles on his, um, pom-pom, so I like it. These glasses are way too dark, um, they're going to be a lot sheerer in the next one I do. Also, I used a different face color. I grabbed the wrong color paint, but it looks fine. Um, actually, I'm really happy with that, how it turned out. But that's what we're going to do today. So we're starting out. Um, I actually used, and let me see if I have, this is just a square. It was a square. I'm going to show you the packaging. I should have gotten two so you could see. But this again, it's in the wood section, and it's a clear pine art mine. Let's see what they're calling it. Um, it doesn't, it just has measurements. So it's about a six by six inch square. That was, you know, it's it's about that wide. It's just a piece of pine. And I had my husband uh, cut around the, the tracing, and I'm going to make it into an ornament. So it's a pretty big size ornament. It just doesn't have the um, the black accent, which I do like the black on the out outside with the snowflakes. But I figured we could just do them as an ornament this way. So there's a couple options for you if you want to paint along with me. So I'll be right back and we'll get started. Okay, I'm back. I'm just going to go over the supplies real quick. So over here, I'm going to tip this up. I have my water source, a few of the brushes that I'm going to need throughout the piece. I have my paper palette, my wax palette, you could call it, um, and paper towel, a little stack of paper towels to blot my brush with. I have my palette. Now I just use a piece of styrofoam styrofoam plate and this is just a neat little gadget that um, I probably got it <clears throat> convention one time but it's like you can use there's a lot I mean they have those little picture holders I use too but this was just a cool one because you can put your picture in there and you just have it as a reference sitting in front of you so you're gonna need your paints and I like this one too because there aren't a lot of colors of paint for this one um, you're going to need your tracing paper, oops, my Snapple, your tracing paper and a piece of transfer paper. So this happens to be a darker, um, what is it called? Um, you know what this is called. Tracing paper or whatever, you know what it's called. I'm brain dead. Anywho, so you're going to get that all traced. Then you're going to trace, now what I did with this, I painted the whole thing with the buttermilk. 
The buttermilk is the color for the beard and the mustache. So I just figured I'd, oh, let me go back down here. Sorry. <laughs> so that wasn't in shot. Uh, tracing paper and graphite paper. That's what it's called. All right. And then what I decided to do was paint the whole thing. Like I said, I traced my Santa on and my husband cut around it. So we're just going to make this into an ornament. But all I did was I mixed my all-purpose sealer um, one to one. So a little puddle of that and a little puddle of buttermilk. Let's see. Is it buttermilk? Yeah, buttermilk is what the beard and mustache is. And I just based the whole thing um, in that like that this way to seal the wood. So that way it was sealed. And then I sanded everything real good and then um, did it again with just straight buttermilk. Probably took probably took a couple um, coats. I might have done three or four actually um, to get it nice and opaque. And then once that's all dry, you give it a final really light sanding with a fine sandpaper and trace your pattern on. So not all the details. You really like I traced on his face now because I am going to do his face in a minute. But um, just the main design lines, like these little check lines, I didn't trace on, obviously, because I'm going to do them in a minute after it's been um, based first. So let's see, one, two, three, three colors plus the beard. So one, two, three. I mean, um, I'm going to do a little base coating. This is mainly base coated. Everything's base coated, so we're going to get into the details, which you know I love. But we're going to do a little more base coating. Um, we're gonna, I need a couple more coats on my um, gingerbread man. But I just wanted to review this brush right here. And this happens to be an American Painter um, shader, it's called. And it's a number eight shader. Um, the different companies have different, I'm telling you, like a number eight shader of a different brand is not the same size. It's weird, but this, I actually, I just like, for some reason, the American Painter brushes have a longer length bristle. Like they're not short and stubby. They have a lot more, I don't know, and I just think they hold water nicely. I think they're really nice to load. I like them. Um, but I, I, as you can see, I have a lot of um, low Cornell brushes as well, or La Cornell, however you say it, um, which is a good quality brush as well. So you, um, you're going to need a shader, something that you can float or shade with. I use an angle brush. A nice detail script brush is always handy. You're going to sign your piece with that. And then this one's my little detailer that I use. And then this is what we're going to um, base coat with or... Yeah, I'm just going to base coat with this. I'm not going to do anything else. So the little gingerbread men, this part of the hat and the gingerbread men are both camel. So I've based that in camel and I did one coat of these so far. So let's go ahead and I'm going to load my brush. I'm just going to get it in the water, blot, come into my paint. You pull the paint out of the puddle. You don't just go into the puddle <clears throat> and then to your piece. You make a little slicker, wetter puddle right next to that pile and I am loading my brush so I have a nice juicy paint on my brush and then you go down to your piece and I always put my paint down in the middle of the whatever I'm painting and then kind of go to the edge use the use the chisel edge of the bristles to make that nice sharp line around there and this should move pretty nicely because like I said I mixed water into the paint because if it was just paint it would be sticky it wouldn't move on the piece. So I'm just grabbing a little more out of that slicker wetter puddle that I made. And you can see the shine on that. But I am using the edge of my brush. Push down to get all the use of the bristles. And if you go out of lines, Q-tip. I always have a Q-tip nearby. But this is a second coat, so I'm not really worried about getting it as exact as I did the first coat, you know because it'll it'll look opaque okay so that one I think this will take probably two coats and we'll cover because this these little um, gingerbread men have a couple cool techniques um, we're gonna do a little stippling I think she did it to kind of get it to look like icing or something you know like they were iced and um, or even um, cookie looking like like porous like a cookie but uh, the one I did in my sample piece, I'll show you in a minute. I don't know if I uh, used the right colors or something. I don't know. So I'm going to, that's why I'm glad. I'm going to always paint it first before I do a tutorial 
so I can work the bugs out and then that way when I come to you guys I'm not figuring things out as I go and it won't be as long because I'm telling you that uh, snowman <clears throat> project I think I did everything already um, it just was long and I just don't think you guys want to sit through um, me finding paint colors or whatever you know I mean uh, so I decided to paint them again and I think what I'm thinking is when I hit 5,000 subscribers I might do a little giveaway I don't know I want to do something um, but I thought I could do a, a giveaway of a couple of my painted pieces maybe maybe I'll paint up some more ornaments um, I think ornaments are always a great that's what I miss I think I'm gonna join um, my uh, the chapter again and maybe I won't go every month to paint because I mean I am pretty experienced I'm not gonna learn a lot at the chapter but when they bring in the big brushes they call them the big brushes the seminars and stuff then I'll be I'll be allowed to take that so that's two coats and that's pretty um, opaque I'm thinking that's gonna be okay i um, gonna let that dry now before I continue um, because the next step is going to be sh to shade um, to add the, de the details and get it looking dimensional and stuff um, you want to erase your tracing lines so by that I mean I'm gonna keep the facial ones right now until I shade but like right here the ones I use it used for base coating the ones around this area or this side of his mustache I'm gonna take them off probably get this one a little lighter like I'm gonna take most of it but I still need a, a line to kind of know where I'm gonna shade but these little lines that are around the gingerbread man that those are tracing lines so I'm gonna go ahead and erase some of those so I'll come back when this is dry and let's see um, I think we're going to base, you know what, I can do that right now. I just need the um, avocado. So around his hat, I'll show you my sample. He has green checks and camel. That's the color camel. So I'm going to base, I'll show you how I do that too. And that's why I love this brush that I just showed you. I'm pretty sure it's avocado. Let me check the color real quick. Um, and this is what I was saying was time consuming and I shouldn't be doing this. Base the green checks with celery green, not avocado. So this is celery. It's a much lighter green. Make sure you shake up your paint because you want that pigment to mix in with all the other stuff that's in the paint. All right. So um, we're at 923. I'll be right back. Okay. So my, my gingerbreads are dry. I'm going to show you real quick. I'm going to, that's, that's as opaque as I need those. But I have this, um, let's see if it says Pro Art. I don't know. I have so many different erasers. But this is kind of like, I think I want to call it a gum eraser. But it takes off those graphite lines nicely. There's a couple different, actually a, a regular pink eraser will do it, I'm pretty sure. But I just like to take them off before I start to shade. Because if you put any paint on top of those, a lot of times you won't be able to get it off and I already took off um, right around um, his mustache I can still see the lines you guys might not be able to see them as brightly but you'll see when I shade it'll be fine alright so we're gonna go up to those checks and again using this brush that I love then this is a number eight shader by American Painter and they sell this at both Michaels and AC Moore this brand and I'm gonna go into my green this is a uh, celery green and I'm going to go pull the paint into its own little puddle mixed with water over here. So I don't want the, that paint right there. I want it mixed with water so that it moves. And I'm loading this brush up and keeping that chisel nice and flat. I'm going to go to my piece. And this one is green. So I'm just going to start, like I said, right in the middle and start putting color there. And then use that ch the chisel, I call it. The, the where the knife blade would be that edge of the knife the edge of the um, brush and that's it one thin coat don't that's it just leave it oh by the way I did pull it over the edge so I am gonna I'm gonna pull that green 
over the edge. Those of you who are using a flat surface, don't worry about this. But yeah, so that way it kind of, the design comes over the edge. I don't know. Anywho, uh, I'm just going right back into that slicker, wetter little puddle I made. And I'm going to, now I've just widened the brush out a bit. So maybe it's a little wide to go in there. So I'm going to go up against this edge. And just gently pull that check. And it's a thin coat. You only need a thin coat of paint for this um, step. Just get it on there. And two thin coats, I would always rather ha prefer having two thin coats to uh, one thick coat because you get ridges and bumps. Um, it just looks so much smoother. People always used to question my painting if it was a decal or did I, you know, because it was so smooth. So it's, I don't know, I think it looks nice and that's why I teach it that way. I like to have two smoother center coats. I got it out of the line, which doesn't matter, but I just take a tooth, a toothpick, a Q-tip and just get it off. And so I'm gonna go around the piece this way. Um, I'm gonna do two coats probably of this green. If that gets dry, oh, let's see where we're at, three minutes, we have a couple minutes. I mean, I hate to have you just sit and watch me base coat, but I mean, honestly, I learn through watching a lot too. Um, so there's something to be said for just watching real time video um, it can help a lot and you see exactly what I do if I have a little hiccup here or there and I'm gonna like I said I'm gonna pull this around can't grab it but I'm gonna take this around and just kind of line it up and put that around the edge um, like in this check here this one by right by the mustache the tip of his mustache <clears throat> I'm going to get my liner brush and get in there. I mean, you can't, obviously, you can't get everything with this brush that I'm using. But honestly, I, I love this brush. It holds so much paint. You can get that nice uh, square line that you're looking for with a check. I've done checks freehand with these brushes. Just going around a piece and just made checks. Oops, what is that? little piece of green I don't know um, I spit <laughs> I tend to use my own saliva <laughs> to clean up my messes I'm sorry I don't know some people might think that's gross and I I don't mean to offend I am just impatient <clears throat> and it's fast <laughs> it's fast to get water that way so this line isn't as uh, straight. It's kind of a little crooked because it's supposed to be the brim of his hat so it has movement. Hopefully I'm in the shot. And I'm just going to do a couple of, I'm coming right up to this guy because he's pretty much dry. So I think I'm going to be able to put a second coat and we'll see if it's opaque. I think two coats is going to be plenty because these are getting shaded. On three sides they're getting shaded so it's going to be plenty okay so here's my second coat let's see how oh yeah that's all you're gonna need just go ahead and put two coats on all these checks and I'll be back and we'll do the next step okay I'm back I've erased all my tracing lines as best I could on my checks there and the first thing we're gonna do is the hat and the coat get that all done and then we'll come in and do um, give him a face and everything because there's only one um, shading color we're gonna do for the hat and this red part here so the, we're gonna do the red first and then we'll do the checks I like them they're so fun to do for me because it's floating and then we'll come and do our gingerbread man and we'll give him a face alright so what you're gonna need is oh I wanted to say too when you're base coating don't forget you can always rinse your brush if the paint starts to get sticky Rinse your brush, clean your brush off, and reload your brush because it's always best to reload than to deal with a sticky, messy brush, okay? Um, so for this, we're going to need some black plum paint, and we're going to use our, 
I use an angle brush to float with. And I'm going to use um, the smaller one. I said in the first video that I, and I do, I, this is my go-to floating brush, but I am, I like to say a heavy hand, meaning that I am not light. When I go in for paint, I go for paint. And when I, when I load my brush, I have a lot of paint on my brush. So I've decided to tone it back and try to use, this is a half inch. No, this is a, only a three eighths inch. So a half inch is probably your best bet. I'm going to invest in a half inch and try to get used to using that um, so that I don't like scare you guys with how much color I use because I just put a lot of color. I like how it looks like that, so it's okay, but um, I think a half inch is probably the perfect size. So for the first, um, for the shading for this, we're going to do up against his hat and down his beard on both sides here. We're going to put black plum and we're going to float it. So that means it's going to graduate from darkest up against the beard and it's going to fade out toward his shoulder. So it's going to give that curved effect. You know, it's going to look shadowy. Um, and again, you're going to go your darkest up against the hat and come this way. So, um, and then on the hat, we're going to do the same thing across this area because this is supposed to be kind of folded up on top of the red so it would be shaded up against that so we're going to float those areas with the black plum and I'm going to review that move my camera over a little bit to the palette because this is how you load your brush when you float you're going to use this this um, paper palette to blend your color into the bristles of your brush so I'm going to go up into my water and and this is kind of a constant thing you're doing. You're constantly going from water to, pa to pl paper towel <laughs> to palette and to your piece. And then if you run out of water, you rinse your brush off, you start again, you reload your brush. Okay, so I'm going to go to water, blot, pick up a little bit of this black plum color on that pointed edge there of my angle brush. If you have a flat brush, just do it on one corner. Pick a corner and put a little paint on that. And then you're going to load your brush. You're going to put the paint down. And while I'm walking away from it, and I'll walk back into it. Then I'm going to go the other way. So what you end up with, the paint is over here. And you can kind of see, I can pick up more paint if I need it. I've left it there on the palette. You can also see that there's water here and that's good too because you don't want color on this end of your brush. You only want water on that end. So I should have a graduation of color from dark to light to water and that's what you want. So if it looks okay on the palette, it'll probably look pretty good on your piece. So I'm going to take this over to my piece and just do these two little areas first. I'm really zoomed in here, so that's good. And I'm going to stick this. See, this is splitting. So to me, that says I don't have enough water on my brush because it's not staying together. I think I'm going to still try it, but that's, I don't know. I get, I'm going to stick the corner where I want it dark, all the bristles on the surface, and pull the color up under that cuff there and just leave it. And if you look, it looks a little dark. I can't, hopefully I'm in the shot. I do not like how that brush is split. It really annoys me. See, I put it back together. While it's still wet, you can do this, but don't, once it starts to dry, if you go back in and try to touch it, it will come up. I'm using a mop brush and I'm going to just tone it down. But now all of a sudden it looks like there's a shadow under that cuff. So I'm going to come over to this side. Let me just come out a little bit so I make sure I'm in the shot. And I'm going to do it again. I'm going to reload my brush. <clears throat> I really need to get I might have a half inch angle. I'm going to have a look. I think I do. Corner load it with a little bit of paint. Go to my paper palette and work that into the brush back and forth. Then come over to my piece and put the paint in the corner there, all the bristles on the surface, and slide that paint along that edge of the cuff of the, and that's it. And I'm just touching where the water is to kind of ease it up. All right, so you can see where that's like a shaded area now. 
I'm rinsing my brush. I really want to use, I'm going to use my big brush and see what happens. I'm just going to show you the difference. Why not? I just like this brush. <laughs> I'm not going to whine. <laughs> Corner loading the same as I just did. It's just bigger. I'm going right back to that same spot where I was and I'm loading my brush. I have a lot of paint on here though. You see that? I love it. Okay, because we're going to go up to this brim now. So again, I'm putting the paint towards the bottom, all the bristles on the surface because you want the water as well. You don't just want the paint and I'm making sure I stick that edge as close as I can. When it starts to stop sliding, that's you got to kind of reload your brush. So I'm going to end it here because it's not sliding. I don't know why. And just tap that water edge off. And if it got on my green a little, I don't really need to worry about it. I'm going to pull the next one from this direction and kind of meet up in the middle. But you can see how that's um, giving it that dimension that you like when afloat. So I just want my water, I blot, I pick up a little bit of paint on the corner of my brush, I go back to that runway there and load that into my bristles. If you see too much water, blot your brush, go back in. And I did. So this time I'm just going to put my paint down right here, all the bristles on the surface, not just the tip of the brush, and pull it gently down the line there. Gently, gently. Oh, my brush is coming apart. I'm not having good luck with my brushes. My hairs are splitting today. And I'm going to end right here where I meet that other one. Just mop the water's edge. And I think that looks pretty good. Got a little bit on the gold. I'm just a stickler. So that's that. We have two more places we want to do right along his um, beard, on both sides of his beard. With the same color, blot my brush, go into the color, go back and load it. Push down, back and forth. Don't get paint on the water side of the brush. Keep the paint on the paint side. Come to my piece. I'm going to put it all down right here. Slide it up. The wood has little wood grain lines that's kind of catching too, but that's okay. It adds to the character. And slide it into that corner. I'm leaving it. But see how, how dark I get it right up against? That's just because, oh, nine minutes. I'll be right back. Okay, so those are done. We're going to do, oh, I have to do this side. And there's a couple other places I forgot about. Um, that we're going to shade as well to kind of give it at the top of his hat here, this little floppy part. We're going to put a shade there and then we're going to put stripes on his um, sleeves as well with this black plum. So I'll show you that. So let me just get this other arm done. I'm sticking the color right in this corner and pulling down this side of the beard. Come on. Sometimes it seems like it's dry or like it's not moving. But when it moves, it's good. You can see a graduation of color. Then right up here, maybe I have, you know what I used to always have is like a chalk pencil. Um, when I painted a lot, I definitely had it. But because I haven't been painting, all my painting stuff isn't, let's see where it normally would be. But I would just draw for you, like with a chalk pencil, kind of the ones that you use for um, sewing. Um, you could just draw a line on here and then the chalk just comes off with water. So you don't need to, you know, worry about it. But you could just put a little line. I don't need a line, but it would be nice for you to see where I'm going with this. But I'm just going to do it since it's not handy. But just FYI, you can always make a little line with a chalk pencil. So, or you know what you can do? Like, I just, I like to use my line drawing as a reference all the time. So I always have this handy to just look at, to kind of give myself um, a reference of where I'm going. So I'm loading my brush. I went back to that 3 8 inch because it's just a little um, area on the hat. I'll show you. 
and I'm loading in black plum and we're gonna do like a little uh, fold type thing right here it kind of has this little fold and I'm just gonna come out and leave it just leave it there I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side so that it kind of has that floppiness at the top I'm gonna flip my piece though move your piece around to make sure that you can hit it the way you want to get it you don't want to struggle and get frustrated please don't get frustrated because that wouldn't be fun painting should be fun so now I've got two little foldy bits up there I mean they're very crooked and that's probably not how she drew them but I like them I think they look fine all right and so one other we're gonna highlight and I really wish I had a brand new one of these because this is the best color for highlighting red it's called hot shots fiery red um, this is the color fiery red it's a fluorescent acrylic paint and I also have it in a folk art but I'm sticking with this I think it's old it's actually stinky it kind of smells weird but I don't know if that's like how it smelled before I don't see a date like I wonder if they put expiration dates they might but it's been working for me like it's worked let me see I mean you can tell that's brighter on the edges there um, I'm gonna use it because otherwise you're, you're using a pink or a white it's just not the same effect I just want to I'm gonna do this and if it doesn't come out highlighted it's okay because it's still because we shaded we have that so this is what it looks like it's definitely a fluorescent color I'm gonna do the same thing though I'm gonna side load my brush and it's kind of it goes clear on you transparent so you can't really see it on your brush that well but don't worry it's on there and then you just take it same way we just did and go down the highlighted sides so you can see it while it's wet and then it dries and kind of disappears but I'm really putting a lot on like I have a lot of color on my brush and I'm putting it there and I'm gonna put it up here right on the top and under here and I'm going to put it on the other side right here and I pity pat along when I um, float some people just go straight like that but for some reason I like to pity pat I don't know why I'm just a pity patter so I don't know if that's showing up like a shine a highlight yet but it it's it is and I'm gonna get some I'm gonna order that if I have to go online and find it I'm gonna find it because that's like the best color to do red with and I love doing my um my Christmassy stuff with that okay so the next thing we're gonna do is get some shading my battery's blinking on our the brim of our hat here actually there's little spots there's dots on the on the hat oh stripes we can do our stripes and I don't want to do them till the end because I, I'll stick my hand in it so we'll do them at the end but we can do the stripes I think I'll go away and change my battery and I'll be right back